Hey there, welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at the basics of generic functions, which are really cool and very powerful inside Common Lisp. Um, we're already probably used to regular functions. We have something like test, uh, which we can compile, and then we can call it. And whenever we call test, it's always going to call this implementation of the function. Unless, of course, we redefine it and recompile that. But a generic function allows us to provide lots of different implementations that can get called based on the types of the arguments that we pass in. Uh, so let's have a look at that. First thing we need to do is define a um, generic function. So we're going to say uh, test g, right? And it's going to take an x and a y. And we're not going to provide any implementation here. We're just going to compile it. That's done. Um, if we call test g now, it is going to throw an error. We pass it one or two. It's going to say, hey, there is no applicable method for this generic function when called with one and two. So it doesn't know what to do. So we have to start providing implementations. So let's do that. I've got to change that setting. Um, we do def method. Now I want to uh, bring up a little thing about terminology. Um, methods are um, kind of implementations of this generic function. They don't belong to classes. They don't live inside a class. In a lot of languages, Classes act like containers, almost like a, like a namespace in themselves, uh, where things live inside. That's not the case in Common Lisp, and it's fantastic, because it means you don't have to define classes just because you want to use the power of this kind of polymorphism. So we can define test g here, and we can say this is going to be x that works on um, integers. So we're going to have an integer here and an integer here. Um, Actually, this is going to work on any number. So let's just do number because addition works on numbers. And we're going to add them together, x and y. Cool. So now, if we call that thing that failed a second ago, test g with 1 and 2, we see we get 3. So it chose this implementation because it's a number. Now, if we passed in two strings, say foo and bar, it's going to complain. It says, hey. Let's uh, bring up the code, actually, because it makes it a little clearer. It's going to say, hey, look, there is no applicable method for the generic function test g when called with these two things, these two strings, because we've only got an implementation of test g that works on numbers. Let's go and add one that works on strings. So def method, um, we're going to do test g. You know, x is going to be a string, y, y is going to be a string. And we're just going to use format in this case. If you've seen our other video, um, you'll know how format works. If not, check in the playlist and you'll find it there. And now we can go back. I'm just going to clear this. We'll do test G with one and two. We do test G with foo and bar. And we see now we've got this behavior. And this is great. What's really powerful about this is we didn't have to, we can provide extra functionality to types that we didn't define. This is really good. So we didn't define string and we didn't define number, yet we can define new methods that specialize on those things. Um, you could define a variant of this that works on strings and numbers. And it's just handled. And maybe we want to do this slightly different. We want the string and then colon and then number. Let's try that again. There we are. Right? So you can define as many implementations as you like. The important bit, and we won't go into all the idiosyncrasies of um, the, the lambda lists that belong to uh, methods, but the important thing here is they all have the same arity, the same number of arguments. So this isn't exactly the same as overloading in something like C-sharp or Java, where you can have different arities. Um, there's a lovely technical term for this in common list, but I can't remember uh, what it is, but we can look it up sometime. Uh, we'll do that in another video. Some of the more technical details of that method. I just wanted to show this behavior and show the kind of functionality we can provide to things we didn't define. Um, and we can use this even really without um, having to have learnt about the object-oriented system that's available in Common Lisp. As powerful as it is, we haven't had to touch on that and yet we can make use of this cool stuff. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you in another video.